Okay, Year 12, this is the final video on redox. It's about prevention of corrosion. So we're going to be learning about how to prevent corrosion. Okay, so corrosion is the oxidation of metal to reduce their structural strength. Okay, and you learned that about that in the last video. And so prevention is based on two principles. Number one, oxygen needs to be in contact with the iron with, to oxidize it. And number two, uh, oxygen doesn't care where the electrons come from. So you can make them come from somewhere else. Okay, so... Let's go through the first one. Surface covering. So iron can be covered by various substances to prevent the oxygen from coming into contact with the iron. That doesn't, uh, if you don't have the oxygen coming into contact with the iron or water even, then you can't have that transfer of electron occur. So substances that you can cover include paint, oil, plastics, metal. Um, so if the metal used to coat is less reactive than iron, any holes in the covering will um, Accelerate the corrosion as the iron is more reactive than the coating and thus will preferentially react to the oxygen to save the covering Now we're going to talk about that later on um, But just uh, write that down for now um, So the surface covering works as, as long as the surface is completely covered. So that's why um, If you have any chips on your uh, paint surface on your um, Iron object you really need to get those fixed because even though you see a little chip and you're like, oh, yeah, that's not so bad Remember, the oxygen is taking electrons from there, but it's not necessarily where the iron is pitting. The iron will usually pit underneath paint or underneath other things, and so therefore you're not going to see where the structural damage is. So any little holes need to be fixed uh, immediately because that's just the anodic area, uh, the cathodic area, not the anodic area. Okay, so that was surface covering. That's preventing the oxygen getting to the metal. Now this is electron sacrifice. So this is where the oxygen doesn't care where the electrons come from. Okay, so uh, first type of electron sacrifice is called sacrificial anode. So a piece of more reactive metal is connected to the iron structure via conductive material, and the electrons from that piece of more reactive metal are given to the oxygen in preference to the iron electrons. So remember, the oxygen bounces on the metal at the interface between the water um, and the iron and the air. Those electrons are taken from the C of delocalized valence electrons, and if you connect it to a more reactive metal, those C, uh, the electrons from those ones will be preferentially taken instead of the electrons from the iron. So let's see why. Okay, so this uh, this um, boat here is being covered with little pieces of zinc. Okay, so zinc is here, your iron is here. Okay, so it is a more reactive metal because it's lower on the standard reduction potential table. Okay, so. What that means is that it's more like this one here, the zinc here, is more likely to give up its electrons. Uh, it's more likely to give up its electrons than the iron is. And so if it's more likely to give up its electrons, it will uh, dissolve and turn into zinc ions before the uh, iron will. Okay, and so that's what they do with all these big boats. They uh, slap on a whole bunch of little zinc plates, and then they um, they will corrode over time. And then when they run out, we just replace them with more zinc plates. Okay, so that's the idea between a sacrificial anode. Um, the next is called galvanizing, which is covering or allying with a more reactive metal, which will preferentially give up its electrons to the oxygen instead of the iron. Again, so the idea is that it's sacrificing, but you're also covering it. So this zinc here is creating a covering layer. Even if that covering layer breaks in the middle, okay, um, and the oxygen is there, the zinc will still be uh, releasing that um, those electrons instead of the uh, iron. Okay. Now, however, if you do cover it with an uh, element which is more, uh, sorry, less reactive than iron, so something like tin, okay, what will happen is that um, the iron will then be lower than the tin, so the tin would be like you know, here somewhere um, in the standard reduction potential table. Okay, so the iron would be lower than the tin, and then it would preferentially give up its electrons to save the tin. So the question begs, why would you even bother covering something with uh, something that's less reactive than the iron? All right. So the idea is that it was much more available than um, in previous times. So that made it a little bit easier to get and that uh, made it easier to coat things. Now zinc is so readily available, um, it's uh, much uh, more often used to cover the different uh, iron structures. Okay, so that's galvanizing uh, a metal. All right, the last one is uh, cathodic protection. All right. This is where a power source is used to force one piece of iron to sacrifice itself and its electrons to protect the other piece of iron. 
the good ion is connected to the negative end of the power source and the electrons are forced onto it to give to the oxygen. And the bad ion is connected to the positive end of the power source and the electrons are drawn from it, forcing it to oxidize and break down to supply the good ion with electrons. So look, look here. Okay, so this is your uh, structure that you're trying to protect. This is the good ion. Okay. This thing here, this is the bad ion. Okay. So if that's the bad ion, what happens is that it's connected to the positive end of this of this battery, which is drawing electrons up here, up this wire from that bad ion, causing this bad ion to turn into Fe2 plus. Okay, it's causing it to oxidize. Right? So doesn't matter because this bad ion is not holding up anything, so even if it oxidizes, that's fine. Those electrons go into this thing here. And so when the oxygen comes and says, give me all your electrons, it takes those electrons instead of the electrons from the good metal. Okay, so instead of it going, taking it from the good metal, it takes it from the bad metal, right? Uh, and then your bad iron uh, corrodes much faster and your good iron stays in good shape. Okay, this is different to the sacrificial anode because you're using another piece of iron instead of a more reactive metal. Since they have the same reducing power, you have to force it to occur with a power source, and that's what this idea is. Which is better, to use a sacrificial anode or to have cathodic protection? It depends, right? How much is your electricity? Can you afford to carry a power source if you want all on at all times? Is your structure mobile or immobile? So cathodic protection is much more uh, better when you're using cheap electricity. Um, maybe, you know, you're running on solar power or something like that. Um, and your structure isn't moving around. Okay, so if you're moving around, like on boats and stuff, it's much better to just replace, uh, to have the sacrificial anodes and you just replace them whenever you need to. Okay, so it's just a question of which one is better for your situation. All right, so these are the methods of prevention of corrosion. Again, this could be a 10 mark question somewhere. So be prepared, kind of know all about it and uh, know all of the um, possible equations for it. Okay, that's it.